Hi, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my sweet 16. I wish it was my sweet 16. Oh my God, can you imagine if it looked like this? as a six it, like it would be over for everyone they're lucky that i was unfashionable ugly bad hair like bad skin they're lucky that they had that version of me and not this one because like i would literally eat them up I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. okay so today we have a weekly reading vlog oh <laughs> i know it's crazy isn't it in this vlog i read i want to say four books but two of them Two of them, like you're really not even gonna hear me talk about. I was in the middle of one book that I didn't finish. So I was reading The House Witch. I'd never finished it. I still need to. This is basically though, like a cozy fantasy type thing where this guy shows up and he's like, hey, I'm like the new cook, the new like chef for the king. And everyone's like, oh my God, you're like so hot, but like also pretty. He's like, shut up, go get to work. He's like a hard ass. So people are like, this guy's like super rude. But actually he's just like very secretive. He's very private because he's actually a witch. He doesn't want anybody to know that he has magical powers. He's a chef. So he like makes good food and stuff. So it's like very cozy. It's very cute. I need to finish it. I need to finish it. Of course, if you saw the thumbnail, I will be reading Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is the anticipated, highly anticipated sequel to Ninth House. I forgot what it was called. Oh my God, how is that possible? I'm sorry, also can I just say that I am literally a princess. Like, hello, it's me, your royal highness. <laughs> Like, it must be so hard to like be around me and you know talk around me and it must be just like so intimidating for like literally everyone oh anyway okay anyway <laughs> i will be reading hellbent i'm sure you know what it's about plus i can't really tell you what this one's about uh, but if you're interested in like learning more about hellbent or ninth house google is free thank you and then i also read the house on house in just so stupid. The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This was very much like a of the moment, like I don't know what to do, I don't know what to read kind of thing. I didn't really mean to read it. And then it was suddenly just open and I was annotating the ever living f out of it. So in case you don't know, this is about this guy whose name I literally forget, Linus, this guy named Linus, right? He's basically like a social worker, but like in this world, things are like magical. So there's like magical creatures and stuff. And sometimes like magical children end up in like orphanages or whatever. It's his job to go, you know, see that everything's like, you know, peachy keen, everything's capiche. And then he gets this like super secret assignment to go to this like island in the middle of buttfuck nowhere because apparently the antichrist is living on this island in an orphanage. And so they're like, Linus, we trust you. Go check it out. See that everything is peachy keen, please, thanks. And he's like, I would like literally rather die than like, I, I guess like I'm just like a really good employee so I guess I'll do it whatever and you know things go from there so I read this if you want to know my thoughts my opinions keep watching um and then I also in like the last moments of this vlog I read uh the tea dragon society volume one and two that's kind of a thing but like barely it's like barely a thing but thank you so much I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog let me know down below what you thought of it if you've read either of these books any of these books I would love to know let me know also if you've read the house witch and what you thought of it I'd love to know your opinion yeah I hope you enjoy don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit we talk about creepy shit we talk about being hellbent on cerulean and shit <laughs> thank you let's roll the clip let's start the reading vlog au revoir this reading vlog. So to get things started, I am currently reading The House Witch, which by the way, is absolutely stunning. Like on the outside, it's absolutely 
stunning. Like, look at it. There are two other books. This is like a trilogy. The second book is coming tomorrow because I started reading it and I was like, oh my God, I love this. Like, I need, I need more. I also started annotating it as well. So um, now there are moments, to be honest, that are like kind of slow. So I like, it's like whatever. I'm going to finish it today because tomorrow, tomorrow is the 10th of January. And do you know what the 10th of January is, my friend? It's the day that Hellbent by Lee Bardugo comes out. Like maybe the most anticipated book I have all year. So tomorrow I'm gonna go to chapters. I'm gonna get a copy. I'm also tomorrow I'm gonna go mail a few packages. And I think I also am gonna go see this like suite that I'm interested in. Um, Cause I am going to be moving uh, within the next few months, maybe even sooner than that. I don't know. Um, but I will be moving very, very, very soon, um, which I'm really <laughs> excited for. So tomorrow I'm gonna go see the suite. Today, very chill. I think I'm gonna finish filming my journaling video because I keep putting it off, but I literally need to finish it for the patrons. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm also gonna continue reading this. It's like a very chill day. Honestly, I don't really know what to say about this. Uh, cause like I'm already almost done with it. What I really like about this though is just how like cozy it is and how it has like this ability to be like genuinely funny. Like, there have been multiple points in this where I have like burst out laughing uh, just cause it's so ridiculous and so funny. Um, but at the same time, it's also very serious. And at the same time you find yourself like unnoticeably falling in love with these characters. Now, to be honest with you, I'm gonna be honest. There are moments where I'm like, do I care? Like there are moments where it feels like it's really dragging. There are also like one or two characters that I really don't like care about or like like, and they seem to be like part of like the main cast, like the main story. Um, for example, Anika, she's like the love interest. And I genuinely like don't care about her. I don't like her. I, I feel nothing about Anika like at all. So the fact that she's like the love interest is also kind of a bummer and I don't love that. But other than that, this is so good. I really, really like it. I like the world building. I like the characters. I love that there's like a little cat um, whose name is Kraken. Kraken. Kraken is my guy, okay? I love him so much. The back cover is stunning. <sighs> Listen, did I buy this for the cover? Yes. But am I actually enjoying it? Yes, also that. But I'm gonna finish it today so that way tomorrow I can get Hellbent and I can devour it. Inadvertently, this is kind of like a hellbent uh, vlog. So I need to finish editing a video. I need to finish filming my journaling video. I need to finish the house switch. Um, and then I also have to prepare um, the packages that I'm sending tomorrow. Uh, so I've got a lot to do today. Um, I had breakfast. I, I ate some leftover soup I made yesterday. I was honestly going to show you how I made that potato soup that I made in my last vlog, but then I got uh, impatient and I just made it yesterday, <laughs> the day before this vlog started. Uh, so, so if anybody is actually interested, please let me know and I will link it down below or I'll put it in the comments or something. I'll do something. I think later on this week, I'm also going to make more soup because I also really want to make like cheesy broccoli soup. That's what's going on with me. I've got a very busy day. Um, tomorrow so I have to like prepare for that. I'm so excited though dude for Hellbent like I can't believe I can't believe I'm this close this close to Hellbent like I really hope I can finish this uh, in time. I'm way further in I think I have like four hours or something left on the audiobook. I believe in me. Anyway I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>
by Lauren Fortgang and Michael David Axtell. Ignorant they of all things till I came and told them of the rising of the stars in their dark settings. Taught them numbers, too. The queen of knowledge. I instructed them how to join letters, making them their slaves to serve the memory. Mother of the muse. Aeschylus. I literally just ran up the stairs because finally hellbent showed up. It is, it's 6.30 p.m. I've been waiting all day for this book to show up. I also have this package as well. Let's start with this one actually. Cause I'm, uh, I'm excited for this one, but I'm not nearly as excited. So look how f beautiful that is. It also seems like it's not as long as the first book. So we have that. The piece that it resistance. Okay, let's open this. I'm also like immediately, immediately gonna start reading it. Cause I can't, I can't wait. This is gonna be the next multiple hours of my night. Like this is gonna be like the rest of my day, like today and tomorrow. So, oh my God, I'm so excited. Ah, okay. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm like literally, ah! <laughs> I'm so excited! Okay, oh my god, I've been, oh my god, I've been waiting for this book! Oh, oh my god, oh my god! Oh my god. Bitch, we have, it's finally, oh my god, look at the spine. Are you fucking kidding? It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I'm so excited. <sighs> oh, the end papers. <gasps> Are you fucking joking? That's stunning. Get the f out of here. Oh my god. I'm so excited. Of course, they have the Yale map. Of course. Okay, part one is called As Above. I'm assuming part two is gonna be uh, so below. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh my god! <laughs> it's fucking gray. I can't get over this cover. I know that some people really don't like the rabbit cover. I love it, dude. I think it's stunning. It's so beautiful. Like, this book is a vibe. It's a vibe. Oh my god. Oh my god! I'm gonna make my annotation legend and then I'm gonna start reading, start annotating. Okay. dude i am just being like transported just being sucked into this world again like i'm living not only that but i'm also annotating the ever excuse me sir <laughs> you're ruining my moment but i'm annotating the ever living out of the book as well if you're like oh i should get a cat i wonder if it would be good for me to get a cat like i don't 
I don't think you, I don't, I don't think it would be. Because this is what happens. They just get overly comfortable. It's like literally so rude. <laughs> so basically Lee Bardugo has just like basically pushed us directly, directly into the store. Excuse me. There's, there's no like, oh hey, like this is like what's going on. It's basically just like, and this is where we are. Get with it or get out. You know what I mean? The amount that I am shipping. Dawes, excuse me, Dawes and Alex. Like there's the tiniest little fucking moments, the tiniest little things, and I and I'm like, oh my god, they're so gay. Oh my god, it's so gay. I even have like a specific um annotation just for gayness. So like this is my issue, and this is like how delusional I am. Dawes and Alex are talking, and Dawes says, like, you know that I'm a terrible liar. And Alex is like, yeah, but like how will you get better if you don't practice? And I was literally, my annotation is is literally, okay, banter, like, okay, flirty. My fatal flaw is that I am gonna read everything. Every, like, every moment of them together is gay. I'm gonna read it as gayly as possible. Is that a thing? Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, oh, they're homosexual. Oh my God, look at him. I'm gonna be like, they're homosexuals, for sure, because they are. <sighs> oh. <laughs> If Darlington comes back and Alex is like, oh my god, I've loved you, Darlington, this whole time. I'm gonna be so f***ing mad. Like, he's losing it. I can't have them being together. Like, I need Alex to be gay. I need it. Okay? I, or I will literally myself. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to reading. It's only been like, like an hour or so. I can see myself reading this for the next like three or four hours. I'm like getting, again, like I said, transported back into the world. I'm living, I'm laughing, I'm loving. Okay, see you. probably about halfway through Hellbent. It's the next day. I just ranted to my patrons for like a good, probably five minutes, 10 minutes, um, poor them because I'm literally insane. But okay, first of all, first of all, I'm really enjoying this book. I really like it. I f love it, dude. Being in this world, being with these characters, it's just, it's a whole thing, okay? I love it. And all of the like little like face cracks and the little goops and the gags, I'm literally living. Like the fact that the fact that there are vampires in this world and literally nobody thought to bring that up is literally fucking crazy. And there's just so much going on. The part where I left off, they were about to go somewhere and we don't know if they're gonna come back. I do have one bone to pick, okay? And that's the fact that Leaf Bardugo, Leah, Janet, Jane, Gwendolyn Bardugo decided that she wanted to make Alex Stern a heterosexual woman. And like, I know, like I have been living in delusion. I've been living off in like La La Land, right? Like I have been living under the pretense. And like, I, tr I truly think that since I finished this book, I have just been deluding myself and like literally just like convinced, like literally convincing myself that Alex Stern is a homosexual. And so now that I'm reading the book, after after months of being like, Alex is gay, Alex is gay. It's like, it was like an affirmation. I was like, Alex is gay. Like, I was like, oh, I'm, go I'm gonna have coffee for breakfast and Alex is gay. It, it was like an affirmation. I woke up every morning and I said to myself, Alex Stern is a homosexual woman. Like, that's what the truth is. And so now that I'm reading it and seeing that the truth is, of course, that Lee Bardugo, a straight woman, is gonna make Alex Stern a heterosexual woman as well. <sighs> like it's not only like painful of course but it's also like f***ing annoying <laughs> like I feel so annoyed because I'm like literally you cannot convince me that Alex Stern is not at least bi she can't she has to be at least bisexual because when you describe Alex Stern in my head I'm like oh that's that's a gay woman like she's she's tiny 
she's thin. I'm assuming she's like somewhat muscular in her arms. And she has tattoos of snakes and peonies. Does that not sound fucking gay? She's coded as fucking gay. And yet, Lee Bardugo has Alex being like, oh my god, but like, how do I feel about Darlington? Darlington, like, oh my god, are we friends? Could we be friends? Oh my god, maybe it's more than friendship, but also maybe it's like more than love. Are you joking? Like, she has to be, she has to be somewhat gay. Like, there's no way she's not. It's like the lack of uh, sexual diversity for me, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like the lack of any awareness that anybody could be anything other than heterosexual because everyone is straight. Everyone is seemingly straight. And you know what, okay, I also had this realization and I know it's crazy, but like I had this realization that I think maybe the reason why I want Alex to be with Dawes is because I want to be with Dawes. <laughs> I, like I literally had the realization last night I was as I was reading that like maybe I'm gay for Dawes. <laughs> Dawes, first of all, big beautiful red hair, stunning, gorgeous freckles. You know what I mean? Not only that, but she's like super f***ing clever and intelligent. She's like literally going for her PhD. She's so f smart. And then also she is like a bad f***ing bitch. Like she will call people out. And it's stunning. And not only that, but like she's just like genu like like genuinely so fucking kind. She cares so much about her friends, about her family. Like she's so fucking beautiful. And I swear to fucking God, if Lee Bardugo kills D off Dawes in this book, I will literally lose my shit. I think I will lose my shit. So I'm just saying that right now. Like as a threat, if Dawes dies, why do I have this pen? If Dawes dies, I will and all of you every single person who's like a Lee Bardugo stand you're over it's done like I'm just like really not liking about the book is like how f***ing heterosexual Alex is and like there are so many moments between Alex and Dawes where they have this chemistry and this banter and I'm like this could be so f***ing good if you just let it happen what I am also kind of sensing and like again this could be completely like delusional and I think it is but <laughs> I think that there is like a little bit of chemistry between Dawes and Mercy. I, like I can sense it. And I also kind of ship that, you know what I mean? Like literally as long as Dawes is gay, that's what I care about. I just want Dawes to be f***ing gay. Come on, Leah. Don't let me down, Leah. Don't let me down. I'm gonna go because I wanna open my gift from Sam uh, that she got me for Christmas. Look at it. I'm so excited. If you don't know, also my best friend Sam has a channel called My Manga Space. Go ahead and check it out. She's so f***ing good. Her channel is so good. It's so professional. It's so well done. <laughs> she sent me a Christmas gift and I'm so excited to open it. So I'm gonna open it on camera, but I'm gonna do it with, you know, the camera facing this. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Stop, stop, Sam! Got me a gift card for Indigo. That's so fucking sweet. <laughs> it's a Tim Hortons gift card too! Samantha, look at this. Little ornaments! Are you joking? Look at that. Like, tell me your best friend um, is better than my best friend. Please, go ahead. I'm waiting. Tell me. My best friend. 
Sam is the best fucking friend. Like, she goes out of her way, above and beyond every single fucking time. Like, oh, I think this might be like chocolates or candy or something. Just from um, past Christmases. Oh, they're like candy crackers or candy, candy poppers. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure they're called. That is actually gorgeous. It's called Wet Hot Allosaurus Summer. That's so funny. She was a country girl looking for excitement. He was an apex predator theropod. He was an apex predator theropod. That's so funny. The one with the bird. And it says, this took longer to wrap than pick out. last one. It's homemade. Love that. <gasps> oh. How in the name of Lucifer does she have this? Or did she have like, it's like a whole story and I'm, I'm literally not even going to get into it, but like this is so, this is so precious. Thank you so much, Sam. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, it's so cute. I'm gonna make sure the cats don't get this because they would definitely for sure try to eat this. Anyway, thank you so much, Sam, for these beautiful gifts. I'm literally gonna go read the letter right now. Um, and yeah, I'm so happy with all of this. I hope you enjoy your gift and I'm excited to see you open it. Okay, bye. away from finishing this book. Not a lot has changed in terms of like my opinions about the book. I love it. I love where it's going. Genuinely don't know what Leah is gonna do. I have theories. I have theories. I don't think they're right theories. I don't think they're good theories. I don't know why. This could just be me, but it kind of gives me like Crescent City vibes, but I don't know why. I don't know why it would give me those vibes, but that's the vibe I get. Specifically like towards like the last half of the book. I think that could just be me. It's also turning a lot into like a very like fantasy forward kind of moment. Like the first book is kind of like these like little dapples, these little hints of fantasy. This book, they're like, no, this is like 
this is like supernatural fan fiction. Like it's very much fantastical. Um, we get a lot more sort of like insight into the more whimsical of like whimsical parts of this world, which I enjoy. I really do enjoy. Again, 100% convinced that Alex is, was, will always be in love with Heli. I can't, like, there there have been so many scenes where she's thinking about Heli, where she's talking to Heli, where she's like, you know, reminiscing and just having all these thoughts and she's like, Heli was like the light of my life. Heli was like my sun and my stars. Heli was this, Heli. and it's like, Alex, you're gay. <laughs> Like, I don't know how Leah could write those things and be like, yes, this is the pinnacle of female friendship. No, 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 okay? There's a fine line, my friend, a fine line, and Alex is tipping, towing over that line. It drives me mad when I have to read about it and be like, this is so f***ing gay. This is coded so homosexually. And then for literally Lee Bordugo to gaslight us and be like, by the way, she's totally hats. Get the f***. Out of here, Leah. Okay, I'm so done with it. That's the only thing I hate about this book is like how just like how it's how it's gaslighting me. It's like abusing me, like it making me think that Alex is a heterosexual woman. I know for shits she is not. That's not a thing people say, but she's not heterosexual. I feel like I'm going crazy. Like this is all I've been talking about. It's just how gay Alex is. I feel like at this point you're like, we get it, she's gay, but also maybe not. Also, we kind of learned Dawes is kind of like a house witch. If there was any more reason for me to like love her and like want to be with her for forever, like that would be it. Like the fact that she like makes all this food and she like imbues her like magic within the food to like comfort, to bring joy, to bring contentedness. Like ugh, Dawes, <laughs> I love her so much, I sort of. If Leo Bardugo kills this bitch, I'm gonna be so f mad because like that's like because that's like one of the theories I have. I have a feeling that Leo Bardugo is gonna try to kill off one of these bitches, and if she kills off Dawes, I swear to f I think I would actually f cry. I'm gonna keep reading it. Um, we're literally I'm, again, like I said, I'm like two hours away from the finish. I'm gonna finish it today. I thought I was gonna finish it yesterday, but I was feeling very like unmotivated and like to be honest I still am feeling unmotivated. I want to finish it because I want to know what's going to happen and I want to know what's going to happen with Darlington. So much happening. We know so much. There's so much already been done of Alex and Darlington at the end of the novel which I don't know if they will. I'm just I'm literally speculating. If they end up like kissing or, f or something I have to sit through that shit. I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna keep reading. And then I also started Cerulean Z. And I thought I should tell you how I felt about this. I do have feelings about it. Like it's not as simple as uh, Ninth House was, where it was like very much a thing of like, oh, like this was just beautiful and beautiful and beautiful and I love it, love it, love it. Like, and like, that, you know, I didn't feel that way. I really like it. But I think overall I'm gonna give it a four star because of a few things that I have issues with. First of all, well, let's actually talk about the things that I love. I love the characters. I love the character development. I just 
fucking love Alex. And I think more than Alex, I really fucking love Dawes. They have such good chemistry and they really just pop off the page. And I think the characters are like my favorite part of these books. And then also the fucking mysteries. The mystery of each book is so good. The magic system, so cool. Although I do also have a bone to pick with the magic system, but I really like the magic system. I think it's really cool. I think it's really subtle. I like that. I like that a lot. Then in terms of this book, I really like how we got to explore more of like Alex and her past. Not only that, but like also like Dawes past and Darlington's past. The main bone that I have to pick with this, and you probably already know what I'm about to say, but like the main bone that I have to pick with this is like the lack of diversity in terms of the queerness. Like where... Miss Bordugo is the LGBTQ. Where are they? Like, she literally was like, let me write a book where there's no gayness. This is just me, honestly. I think I'm just annoyed. Like, like I've said, I think in previous clips, like that there are no f gay people and that everybody is a hetero. Alex especially is a hetero and that like Dawes is probably a hetero. Like it's, a, it's just f annoying. My camera died and then both of the batteries I have for my camera were dead so I had to charge them a little bit. Anyway, I'm just annoyed that everybody is straight, that there's no gay people, and that like there's just like no re there's there's just like no representation for the gays. Where's the gay shit? Leah? Leah, where is it? Also, parts of the book I was like kind of like cringing and like again this is just like very personal to me, but like parts of the book I was just like like it just reminded me of like supernatural and it was kind of giving me like like uh sarah j moss realness but like not in a good way you know what i mean like i was just like ugh. like why are you doing this like this is like a little bit too much honestly for me like i honestly really love like the casual sort of like subtle magic the magic in this book is much more Real. Like the characters have more of like a tangible like magicness to them. That probably makes literally no f sense, but there were parts of this where I was like, again, it just kind of reminded me of like supernatural and like it was like a supernatural fan fiction kind of thing. And like that's probably coming from nowhere. I'm just saying I wasn't living, I wasn't laughing, I wasn't loving. Overall, four or five stars. If you read if you read Ninth House, you need to check out Hellbent. I really like it. And this cover is absolutely fucking stunning. My heater turned off, thank God. Um, I really liked this. Four star. But where's the gay shit? And also, the magic system went too far. So started reading, as you may have seen, House on the Cerulean Sea, or in the Cerulean Sea. I'm confused about this preposition shit, okay? In? What do you mean in the Cerulean Sea? It's on. Because if it was in the Cerulean Sea, it would be literally in the Cerulean Sea. Anyway, I started reading it. I started annotating it. Can I just say, I fucking love this so far. I'm about, I'm probably about halfway through, honestly. I'm about 162 pages in. It honestly surprised me because when I hear, when I heard people talking about it, and they were like, it's so good, I love this, blah, 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 blah. I was like, really? Like, this book? This is the book you're gonna say is like your favorite book of all, like what? What does that even mean? Like, now that I'm reading it, I kinda get it. Like, it's fucking adorable. Although I do need to say that I've heard some shit about TJ Klune that I just, I just don't like, I just don't like. This book is cute, it's adorable, you know, it's like lighthearted, it's warming. But the author, Mr. TJ, in interviews, or in one interview or something, he said something about like feeling um, like inspired or like he was doing research about like residential schools and so he took parts of that history, that very real history where children, like literal children were assaulted, raped, murdered, and then he put it into this cute little book and like he said that that was like his research and that he did like a lot of that or whatever and that like he used it in the book and you can see parts of it in certain aspects which is like a huge red flag and it's fucking weird it's fucking weird tj why listen i said this to my patrons and i said this to my roommate and i'll say it to you if you write a book shut up if you write a book shut the up 
nobody wants to hear you talk about like your intentions what you were going for like if if it's not in the book if it's not in the book don't tell us about it don't tell us i don't i don't care and i don't want to know if you write a book shut the fuck up shut up it's just like jk rowling when she was like you know dumbledore is gay and harry potter is a single mother or whatever the fuck she said like it's the same shit you can't after after the fact add shit to the book and tell us like your intention or like what you were going for or, like what the characters were actually li like no shut up be aware of that before going into this book that tj clune basically like appropriated their trauma for this book Basically, I found this out from a TikTok, right? From an indigenous creator. And they were talking about um, how they really enjoy this book and how they really love this book. And it's like one of their favorite books of all time, but, but that they're critical and bothered by um, his use of residential schools and the trauma of indigenous children uh, from like the early 19th or 20th century rather. And even now, honestly. This creator was talking about how they were very critical of, but that his uh, representation and that the way he depicted queerness and uh, LGBTQ themes in the book was really why they loved it because it seems very normalized and 100% the way that he's writing about the characters and their identities stunning beautiful and only that but like the characters specifically like the orphan children are so cute so lovable and the book is genuinely funny I really like this I'm critical though of critical of this guy i don't like him but i really like this book anyway i'm gonna keep reading it i have 33 minutes left on my reading spread so i'm gonna do that um and yeah hopefully i can finish this today because i think i have like three and a half hours left on the audiobook i think i'm also going to clean up the trash in my room because my room is fucking gross okay anyway bye i'll see you in a second I want to say pages into this I might try to finish it tonight I wanted to just take a moment and just like talk about how I feel about like the characters how I feel about the plot etc etc first of all I think my favorite character my favorite kid at least at the orphanage is Theodore <laughs> like I know people expect me to say that Lucy's my favorite but like I just love Theodore because first of all I love that he's like the funniest one that everybody laughs at him. What I love the most though is that like, we don't know what he's saying. We don't know what the joke is. Saying all these like quick whips and then Linus is like, doesn't know what he's saying. I think that's hilarious. But then what really gets me, I think is like his appreciation towards Linus for the buttons. Like it's so cute. Like he just, he's so thankful for the buttons. I also really like Chauncey. His want and desire and need to be a bellhop, I think is so sweet, so endearing. Angel, it's like, like literally an angel. Fee, also adorable. Oh, I forget her name, the gnome. The gnome girl, also adorable. And Lucy, Lucy is very funny. I like Lucy a lot. Lucy keeps just being like, I am an agent of darkness and like I have spiders living in my brain, blah, blah, you know what I mean? Like, like I am the devil incarnate or whatever. But I'm like, are you actually evil? Like I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards him being not actually that evil. That's like what I'm theorizing. Also, Linus found this like cellar, this like basement that nobody ever told him about in the house. And so I'm like, what the fuck is in the basement? Is there like another kid in the basement? Is that where some kind of like magic weird shit is going on in the basement? Like what's going on in the basement? What's happening in the basement? Arthur though, Arthur and Linus are so cute. Overall, I'm really, really, really enjoying it. 
I think everything is so cute, everything is so fun, um, and I love it. I really love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> about how I felt about all the books and also what I might have also read that I want to talk about. First of all, Hellbent gets a four stars from me. I really liked it. And then I think I'm also going to give House on the Cerulean Sea four stars because I really liked it. I loved how cute everything was. It was very sweet. There were things about it that I've already talked about, like the fact that he used residential schools as like inspiration. Like just didn't hit the right spot that I wanted, so uh, four stars. And then, literally just today, I read the Tea Dragon Society, book one and two on Kindle Unlimited, and it was so fucking cute. It was so fucking cute. The little tiny little tea dragons. And then, everything is so gay. So gay. I'm gonna read the third one, like today. Cause it's just, it's just adorable. It's just so cute. Yeah. That's basically it. I'm probably gonna talk more about these in my wrap up. I can't think of anything else I wanna say. I think I would also give uh, Tea Dragons maybe four stars. Four stars for the first book and then I think three stars for the second book. I'm gonna let you go. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching this reading vlog. I really appreciate it. Nico appreciates it as well. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Sorry, Nico. Hmm. You have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. We talk about creepy shit. We talk about being hellbent. Okay? We talk about the houses on Cerulean Seas and shit. Thank you so much. I have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye. See you. Thank you. Bye.